Prepare to be inspired as we unveil the untold stories of 10 extraordinary female scientists who shattered barriers and defied the odds to become the absolute best in their fields. From groundbreaking discoveries to revolutionary theories, these remarkable women rewrote the rules of science and left an indelible mark on human knowledge. Get ready to meet the unsung heroines whose brilliance and determination not only transformed their respective fields but also paved the way for future generations of female scientists. Buckle up for a captivating journey as we celebrate the awe-inspiring achievements of these trailblazers and rediscover their remarkable contributions to the annals of scientific history. The space race has been a group effort over many centuries. Although other men didn't get the recognition they deserved, we're going to concentrate today on the largely unknown women of space. They not only had to battle the politics of science, they had to fight to be there in the first place. Despite the obstacles, these ten women made significant contributions to our understanding of space and deserve to be more widely known. 1. Katherine Johnson B. 1918 Born in West Virginia in 1918, Katherine Johnson excelled in school, entering high school at age 10 and college at age 15. She graduated with B.S. degrees in math and French when she was 18. Then, she became a teacher. In the 1950s, a relative told her that the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, the forerunner to NASA, wanted to hire African-American female computers for their guidance and navigation department. Back then, pools of women performed calculations for NACA's engineers. 2. Caroline Herschel, 1750-1848 Dubbed the 18th century Cinderella of Science, Caroline Herschel escaped the abusive house of her parents to eventually become a prominent force in astronomy. Born in Germany in 1750 to a father who encouraged her education but a mother who wanted to keep her as a lifelong servant, Caroline had a difficult childhood. When she was three years old, smallpox left her face scarred. Then, at age 10, typhus stunted her growth to 130 centimeters, 4'3", tall. Her parents felt that her physical appearance would stop her from making a good match in marriage, so they decided to keep her as a housemaid. 3. Annie Easley, 1933-2011 Born into the segregated South in Alabama in 1933, African-American Annie Easley learned the importance of a good education from her mother. You can be anything you want to, said her mother. It doesn't matter what you look like, what your size is, what your color is, you can be anything you want to, but you do have to work at it. Also, Easley initially majored in pharmacy, she had to change course when she relocated to Cleveland with her husband. There were no pharmacy programs there. When she read a local newspaper story in 1955 about sisters who worked as human computers for nearby NICA, she knew she'd found a match for her math skills. Two weeks later, she became one of the few African Americans on NACA's staff. 4. Maria Mitchell, 1818-1889 Maria Mitchell is believed to be the first female astronomer in the U.S. We especially need imagination in science, she said. It is not all mathematics, nor all logic, but is somewhat beauty and poetry. Born into a Quaker family in Massachusetts in 1818, Mitchell received much of her early schooling in astronomy from her amateur astronomer father. As an adult, she and her father would view the sky from an observatory on top of a bank where he worked. In 1847, using a tiny 5-centimeter, 2-in telescope, she discovered a comet, the first telescopic one observed in the U.S., Called Miss Mitchell's Comet, it brought her serious recognition from leaders in the field. The King of Denmark gave her a gold medal for finding it. She was also the first woman invited to join the American Academy of Arts and Sciences a year later. It took almost a century for another woman to achieve that recognition. 5. Mary Watson Whitney, 1847 1921. Mary Watson Whitney did more for the women who succeeded her in astronomy than she did for herself. Born in Massachusetts in 1847 to well-to-do parents who encouraged her education, Whitney showed an early aptitude for math. She was fortunate that Vassar opened a year after she graduated from high school. Otherwise, she would have been denied an advanced education in astronomy. Upon entering Vassar, Whitney bonded immediately with Maria Mitchell, who was the school's professor of astronomy and director of its observatory. While getting her degree, Whitney had to deal with personal tragedies like the death of her father and the loss of her brother in a shipwreck. She was charged with taking care of her mother and three younger sisters. But she remained strong. As one of her classmates said, 
From the first day of her college life, she moved through her appointed orbit as serene and calm and as true to the line as the stars she loved so well. 6. Maria Winkelmann Kirch, 1670-1720 Maria Winkelmann Kirch became an astronomer when you didn't need a formal education to enter the field. Born in Germany in 1670, Maria was fortunate that her father, a Lutheran minister, believed that women should be educated. After he died, her uncle took responsibility for her schooling. Later, she continued her study of astronomy with Christopher Arnold, a local farmer who had taught himself about the skies. Through Arnold, Maria was introduced to Gottfried Kirch, a prominent astronomer at that time who was about 30 years older than Maria. They married in 1692. Together, they continued his work of producing almanacs and calendars for the Berlin Academy of Science. Based on their observations of the sky, Maria and Gottfried, she included information in these publications about eclipses, phases of the moon, positions of the planets and sun, and more. 7. Margaret Lindsay Huggins, 1848-1915 Working together from their home for about 30 years, Margaret Lindsay Huggins and her husband, William Huggins, gave us the basis for astrophysics, the study of the physical nature of celestial bodies. In their day, astronomers weren't sure that the distant lights in the sky were stars like our sun. Margaret and William were the first astronomers to show that starlight had the same colors as the light from our sun. Analyzing visible light from stars and other celestial objects is called optical spectroscopy. It's a way to determine a star's composition, density, motion, and temperature. With their studies, Margaret and William determined that the same elements composed everything in the known universe. 8. Annie Jump Cannon 1863-1941 Annie Jump Cannon didn't come up with any great theories or compute trajectories to take astronauts into space. She did grunt work, but without her, we'd have no basis to understand the stars. Born in Delaware in 1863, she was fortunate to be the oldest daughter of Delaware State Senator Wilson Cannon. That gave her resources and educational opportunities that most women didn't have. Encouraged by her mother, Cannon studied astronomy and physics at Wellesley College and astronomy at Radcliffe College. In 1896, she joined a group called Pickering's Women, or Pickering's Harem, who worked for Edward Pickering, the director of Harvard College Observatory. Back then, most scientists thought the Milky Way was the only galaxy in the universe. Astronomers were detecting more points of light in the night sky with their newly built telescopes, but they didn't understand what they were seeing. 9. Margaret Burbage, B. 1919 Margaret Burbage made some excellent contributions to astronomy but she also fought hard for women's equality in the field. One of her notable achievements in that area was to turn down the Annie J. Cannon Award from the American Astronomical Society because they only awarded it to women. She believed it was just as discriminatory to exclude men as to exclude women from any area of astronomy. Born in England in 1919, Margaret Burbage was encouraged by both parents to pursue science. She received her bachelor's degree in 1939 and a PhD in astronomy from the University of London in 1943. A few years later, she married fellow astronomer Geoffrey Burbage, with whom she worked extensively during her career. He was known as the theorist and she, the observer. They spent most of their careers in the U.S., with her eventually becoming a U.S. citizen. 10. Emmy Noether, 1882-1935 German mathematician Emmy Noether must have been extraordinary if Albert Einstein had been impressed by her intellect. In a letter to the New York Times after her death, Einstein called her the most significant creative mathematical genius thus far produced since the higher education of women began. Yet few people know her name or what she accomplished. Born to a family of prominent mathematicians in Germany in 1882, Noether was initially schooled in acceptable subjects for her gender, such as languages and piano. But she soon switched her study to math at the University of Erlangen. She wasn't allowed to formally enroll because she was a woman, so she audited enough classes to earn the equivalent of a bachelor's degree. She got a graduate education at the University of Göttingen and then returned to Erlangen for a doctorate in mathematics. As we reach the triumphant conclusion of this empowering journey, we stand in awe of the remarkable female scientists who have shattered glass ceilings and left an indelible mark on the annals of scientific history.